Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and enjoying your weekend. In today's session, let's discuss about Pine Screener. It is a powerful trading view utility that can that we can use for creating programmable screeners. Trading view offers a lot of uh, built-in screeners. For example, when you go to trading view homepage, you go to products and screeners, you can see there are a lot of options here, stock screeners, ETFs, bonds, cryptos, and etc. So if you go to stock screener, uh, you can see that it has a it, it has a lot of features like you know you can it enables you to um, filter the stock market with a variety of condition maybe financials or technicals or you can even build very complex uh, not very complex some complex uh, technical scenarios uh, in this uh, using the screener but having said that um, there are still some scenarios where the screener may not be um, you know sufficient. For example, um, let's take the example of a divergence. So if you want to find out, if you want to screen this market uh, to find which all stocks are experiencing a bullish divergence, you'll not be able to use this uh, screener. So in order to address those issues, uh, we, can, uh, we can use another screener utility called a spine screener. So if you go to the same um, menu here in the screeners, you can see the Pine Screener utility here. So I've loaded the Pine Screener here again uh, already. So in order to use Pine Screener, you need a few things. First, you need a watch list containing all the stocks, right? All the stocks where you want to, um, you know, perform the screening, right? So, and there is a limitation that the screener like you know the watch list that you apply to the pine screener cannot have more than thousand items um so it has to be less than thousand items so you can still have up to thousand and screen them so in order to um, do that in order to reduce the initial load um what we can do is we can use the stock screener initially and filter apply some filters and reduce the list to less than thousand and then apply the create a watch list from this and that watch list we can apply to the pine screener and do the rest of the processing all right um and the second thing what you need is the indicator so this indicator has to be built in a specific way uh, specific way so that um you know it can be used as a screener right so <clears throat> um th that is another topic and i'll probably um create another video on how to create a programmable pine screener i'll create another video for that but in today's session um, let's discuss about how to make use of this utility to um, screen using uh, an existing screener script and the watch list right so let's first create a watch list so this already has a watch list which has 155 items i'll probably delete them one minute i can see if i can delete yeah i can delete i'll just unflag all of them um, so the red doesn't have anything no watch list red is empty so now go back to the uh, stock screener here uh, just load it again for a safe side so it still have 655 i put a simple condition here market cap is greater than or is equal to 10 billion and pe greater than or is equal to zero so if i remove this so you still have 729 okay let's remove this and just uh look for um greater than is equal to 10 billion usd market cap because it's still less than thousand so this will still work let's create a watch list from this so in order to create a watch list uh, you can do it in a simple way what you can do is select the first item and then press ctrl a so that it will select everything and then right click and you can add the red flag to this so <clears throat> but you have to be careful for example, um, the screen load has a lazy loading. Lo lazy loading in a sense, it doesn't load all 729 items in the screen. To load, it will load only the first hundred. So if you scroll down further, see there are still some of them not loaded and not selected. So what you need to do is you need to scroll down till the last until no more, uh, you know, loading is happening. And lazy loading is happening. So once all all are done, you can select something and then do a Control A. And then add to the red flag okay so re the red watch list has now 729 elements so if i go back to the pine screener and if i refresh so i have my 729 elements here so that's the first step is done we have the watch list with less than 1000 items in it 
right so the next is to get the indicator so i will use the divergence indicator which i created recently um so let me go back to this so the, here it is the divergence screener which i've created um yesterday and i just updated 22 minutes ago so one thing you need to do is you need to add this to your favorite so otherwise it won't come in the drop down um in the um, in the pine screener for example this indicator drop down it doesn't come here unless you have added this to favorites right so once you add this to favorites you'll be able to see this in the uh, drop down here select the indicator right so once you select it will uh, it will populate all the plots that this indicator generally generates like for example you don't see the plots here because i've added them as data only plots so you don't see them because uh, it will just um add too much display so i have not added this to the i have not added these plots to the um screen but it is required for the screener that's why i've added them um and the um, as a data only display right so now i added this indicator so you need to make sure that we are using the right time frame and um, the right settings so in order to do that uh, what you can do is you click click on the drop down here you can see the time frame set to one day i'll keep it as is because i'm also on the daily time frame here so i'll keep the time frame as one day and then settings i'll again keep it as uh, default but you can change them so rsi uh, is the indicator the oscillator that we are using right now and the trend detection method is based on the zigzag and one thing to keep in mind is that we will not be able to use external indicators here uh, in the uh, pine screener because um, you can only add one indicator in the list so we'll not be able to use external indicator in this case right um, there are a few cases where um, you know we are using the external signal but um, unfortunately you will not be able to use this as part of the screener functionality we can still use the external say, signals in the indicator uh, but you will not be able to screen stocks based on that right so the option right now is only use one of these oscillators um, and one of these trend method ma difference in zigzag we can add add more to this later on uh, but we'll uh, we'll discuss about that later in another session right so um i'll keep the for now i'll keep all the settings as default and apply and like now you can scan them but before scanning you need to identify what you are filtering based on so let's say you want to find out the stocks which are experiencing bullish divergence in last few bars so there are two conditions here so bullish divergence last and bullish divergence current so the current means um a new bullish divergence signal generated today on on current bar then it will generate it will filter out them filter in um, those symbols but in if you select last it means that it will look for the symbols which has experienced or which has generated a bullish divergence in last few bars so like you know if the unless the divergence signal is not broken it will say that okay there is a bullish divergence which happened on this instrument a few bars ago all right let's use this for now so i'll all you need to do is you need to set equals value one so this is because i have configured the indicator to generate the plot as one if you go go back to this and go to the data window here um you can see that this last is set to one here you can see that the last is set to one so that's why um so that's not appearing one minute let me um let me go back in time let me go back in bar replay and go back to here so uh, yeah you can see that bullish hidden divergence is one and as soon as it breaks uh, if i go further and if it breaks so this price is broken here uh, so as soon as it breaks that's gone so that's not a signal anymore uh, there's no it's saying that's not it's not in a bullish divergence anymore uh, because this price the the price on which the hidden divergence has happened um it's broken now right so okay so this is just uh demonstrate like how the indicator works but again go back to here let's go back to the screener so um we are trying to identify the indian the instruments are uh, the stocks which has experienced bullish divergence in last few bars all right you set bullish divergence is equal to last is equal to one and then press scan
right it's going to take some time because it's going to run the indicator on all 700 stocks right you can see that it has selected 82 out of 700 uh, stocks so let's verify uh, let's pick one or two and let's verify first is acgl so let's go back to the chart acgl right and when you select this you can see that the last indicator uh last divergence or oh, sorry we are actually in uh, bar replay mode i'll remove this so the last divergence which happened here so it's not broken it the price has, hasn't come down it so it is showing this as uh, that's why it has picked this stock in the short list All right and also we can go with another one app all right Yeah, you can see that it has happened some time back, but it is still showing that uh, in the screener list. That's because this price is not broken at. So one, if this close, if the price has closed below this point, then it will not show them in the screener list. Uh, but since it's not broken, it's still showing them. Right. So that's how the point screener works. So uh, this is a very powerful utility. Like, you know, we can build a lot of things um, and we can probably build a lot of indicators that we have, um, you know, developed before. We can make it compatible to work with the screener. So um, it is something which uh, we all should be exploring and using um, in the future. Um, we'll be working more on this as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, thanks very much. Bye.